What are you looking at? Oh. Hi, Joe. Hi. See, so, I'm looking at this little guy here. I don't know what what, what is it, Paris? That's the uh, Fosawina sinus. The wah 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 wah. The Fosawina sinus. Please English that. Bequita? Bequita. They're very cute. Now, Fosawina is the genus that it belongs to. There is only four in the genus that it belongs to. Now, sinus is the scientific name. The Fosawina sinus is the Bequita. Now, the Bequita is the smallest of the porpoise. Do you want to know something else? Yeah. They are the rarest animal on Earth. Wow. And why is that? I'll get into that a little bit later when I give some statistics about this little guy. Now, they are, they're a porpoise, mm -hmm. so they're not a dolphin. Okay. Okay. So they are a species all of their own. Now, I don't know how much about the porpoise that you know, but we will do a documentary about the porpoise, but we're specifically talking about the Fosawina sinus today, which is the Vaquita. Should I say tonight? Tonight, yes. yes. Um, just for the record, tonight we are down at the wharf in Port Lincoln, South Australia, where we live. Yeah. Now the building you see behind you is Viterra. Um, we will actually do, because it is kind of nautical, um, we will do a documentary on that one day um, and what it is actually a part of and how it fits in to the marine world of Port Lincoln. Um, but we are currently talking about the Bequita. Do you have any questions about the Bequita? How big are they? Because by this picture, he looks very small. Very, yeah, that's just, yeah. yeah but how big? So, like all species, or most species of marine life, the female is larger than the male. So the female, I'm going to tell you this before I tell you that, the female and the female are, they're smaller than me. Wow. And I'm pretty tiny. sure. Yeah, they're only tiny. The female only grows to about four foot nine. And the male only grows to about four foot six. Wow, that's tiny. So they are the smallest porpoise in the world. Wow. Literally the smallest porpoise in the world. Now the sad thing about the porpoise is they are becoming more, more and more extinct, if I can use the word. Um, there's not a great deal of porpoises left, um, particularly of the Vaquita. Now, the Vaquita is very, very distinct. How so? Their colouring, I'm just going to zoom in for you guys. So the colouring, they have black around the lips and around the eye. So that's, that's one very, very distinctive um, part of the Vaquita. Now, they do have a tall um, a triangular dorsal fin. So like this so, one? Here, yes. Right? So the dorsal fin is quite tall for, for a small um, little guy and girl. Um, so the dorsal fin is very tall. Now... They only live in the Gulf of California. That is it. That's where they're found. So the Vaquita has the smallest habitatual range out of all marine life. So their habitat is very limited. So they have the smallest of the habitat in the world. Um, now, as far as their colouring goes, they are very, very distinct because they are black. They're mostly mm -hmm. black. Their colouring is mostly black, as you can see. But the ventral area is white. Mm -hmm. So we can see these white areas. Mm -hmm. Now, the, dip, the difference between them and a dolphin is you might notice with their beak, which is around here, which is around the snout. They do not have like a distinct no. beak. They mm. don't. They do like. not have a beak. 
So it's more, it's very rounded, and they have what distincts them is their black mouth and the black eye is what distincts them. Now you can tell a male from a female, not only by the size, but the females have larger fins. Wow. The fins on the female are larger than on the male. They're wider than on a male. So that's one very quick, very easy, sure way to tell the difference between a male and a female. Now, dolphins spend time in what is known as a what? A, dolphin. <laughs> a pod? A pod, yep. You told me so many things, my brain. Ooh, ooh. So dolphins spend time in a pod, yep. Do these guys spend a pod? No. No. No, they do not. So these guys tend to be either a loner or they go in pairs. So a lot of the time, you will only see a vaquita in pairs. And most of the time, that pair consists of a mother and calf. Mm, that's adorable. It is very cute. So they are very, very parental. Um, they're like a dolphin. They are very, very parental. Um, they do keep their baby very, very safe and keep, keep their calf with them. And, and they're very, very parental. Now, they have been known to have up to a group of up to 10 individuals though. But that is a very, very rare occasion. Yeah. Um, most of the time, they do not travel in a pod, they travel as a pair. And like I said, that pair generally consists of a mother and a calf. So, when the father is, you know, being intimate with the mother, and that calf, do they stick around or they just go after they? No, because during mating season, um, the the male has to compete for the female. So there's a lot of competition between males during mating season for a female. So they do have to compete quite harshly. Pretty much like any species, really, they have to compete. Yeah. Um, now, interesting thing with the male when I was talking about. Um, the difference between the male and the female. And this is not something you're going to be able to tell. Um, so the female, as I mentioned, has the, has the wider fin. Mm -hmm. um, petrol fin. Yeah. Did you know that the testes of the male take up 3% of the body? Wow. There you go. Wow. So that's another distinguishing factor. Yeah. As well. Um, but that's not something you're going to be able to see. Um, no. So... <laughs> Um, but yeah, so the, the male, no, will, will not hang around. It's generally the, the, the mother of the calf. Now, they do give birth between February and April. Now, the interesting thing about these guys is they're pretty much known to only give birth every couple of years. Yep. So, they have been known to give birth every year, mm -hmm. but generally, birthing and breeding, and breeding is every, is every other year, so it's every second year. Yep. So it's only every two years. Do they give birth to one? Yes. Yep. They will only ever give birth to one calf. Okay. Um, which leads me to my next week that I'm going to tell you about them. Um, the Vaquita. Now you were telling me earlier that you'd never heard of them. No, I never have until you mentioned them. And our videographer, V, also said that he'd never heard of the Vaquita. No. Am I right? Right? Yeah. Do you want to know why that is? Yes. And it's not just because they are um, isolated or, or limited to that one area in the Gulf of California. It's because of their numbers. Now, a bit of their little history. The Vaquita only came under our radar in 1958. Now there was only a few studies done back then. Yeah. It wasn't until 1985, some 30 years later, that deeper studies were done on this genus. Okay. So they did deeper studies on them. Now their ancestors are said to go back about two and a half million years ago. Yeah. And do we know who their ancestors are? No. No, it's uh, it's extremely. Their ancestry is extremely difficult to understand yeah. because during this two and a half million year period, 
their um, their population bottlenecked. So it, it kind of came to a, a bit of a, um, a halt. So there's not much known about their ancestry, but their ancestry does show us that the Vaquita of today does have a good health. Yeah, they are very healthy. Yeah. Which brings me to the next thing. Now, we here at Manta Marina are always on about conservation of marine life, aren't we? We are, yeah. There is no marine animal in the world that needs our help for conservation more than them. Do you want me to tell you why? Yeah. The Vaquita, in the year 1997, there was some 567 in the population of Vaquita in the Gulf of California. There was 567. That number, by 2007, dropped to 150. That's now that is a drop. drastic drop. That's a huge drop. That is over 500. Yeah. That is a drastic drop. That number further in 2018-2019 went down to 19. So you look at 2007 to 2018-19 in 11-12 years, they went down to 19. Now, today in 2021, there is 10 or less left of them. That's terrible. In the Gulf. California. They are critically endangered. Did you know that they are the most endangered animal in the world? They are more endangered than the Bengal tiger. And that says something because they're pretty endangered as well. Yeah. And even that's more than the Sumatran tiger. There's only 500 Sumatran tigers left in the world. That's, that's so there sad. is less, less of them than what there is of the Sumatran So what we're looking at here is one of the most, or the most, endangered animal in the world, guys. In the world. On a world scale, we only have 10, maybe less left. Now the reason for that is their breeding cycle as well. They don't have a very, um, it's a very sporadic breeding cycle. Like I said, it's every two years. They have been known to birth one every every year, but generally it's every other year. They are pregnant for 10 to 11 months. So it is quite That's a lengthy. Like <laughs> yes, it is. So it's quite a lengthy uh, gestation period as well. Yeah. Um, and they do keep their calves with them, um, which is a good thing because the calf is protected. Yeah. Um, and this birthing, like I said, happens between. Now, as far as their habitat goes, they live in waters about 150 metres deep. So, they do live around that continental shelf area in the north of California. Now, because they do, they have quite often, because of their fin, um, because they live in such shallow water around that continental shelf area, because I told you their fin is quite tall, their dorsal fin, it is seen quite often, their, their dorsal fin is seen quite often in their shallow waters and they are quite often um, mistaken for a dolphin. So people think, oh there's a Watch dolphin there. Will they come up to you? Yes, they will. They are very social. Yeah. Um, porpoises as, as a species are very social. They are, in that aspect, they are like a dolphin. They are very, very social. Yeah. Um, and so th they are because um, they are in the shallower waters. Now the reason they live in these shallower waters is because their food source is in abundance there. And what is their food source? Their food source is generally uh, what we call benthic animals, uh, benthic fish, uh, like your grunters. Um, they will eat those. Um, crustaceans, squid, anything like that. Yeah. So um, their their food source is a lot like a dog. Um, and they do live in these shallow water areas because their food is, is, is extremely abundant around the continental shelf is where you do find these benthic animals. Now when yeah. I say benthic, benthic means bottom. Yeah. They live on the sea floor. 
So they eat they eat bottom dwellers. Yeah. Okay. Um, because they do live in that shallow water. Yeah. Okay. It is quite sad that there's not too many of these little fellows, but it's very very sad. Yeah. Now, just look at that fact. So cute. So adorable. Yeah. Very sad. Now, as far as their lifespan goes, it's been estimated that it's about 20 years, their lifespan. So, you look at that on the grand scale of things, that's not a long time. No. no. But when you look at other marine animals, it's not a long time. No. Now, we're already down to 10, ten or under of these species, guys, of the vaquita. It's very sad. Now, you look at their natural lifespan, which is only 20 years, that's... You're older yeah. than what they would be when they die. Very terrible. Yeah. It's a very sad thing. Um, we don't want to live for years. No. Because they, they do, they only live for about 20 years. Um, so yeah, they, they do live in these shallower waters because that's where their food source is quite abundant. Um, and also the tidal flow as well. And the tidal flow. So the tide, um, as you know, like a lot of marine life runs from the tide. So all the fish and everything that they eat runs from that tide. So the tide will flow through. Yeah. Um, so these guys, as as a species, we've almost lost them. Really sad. It's very, very sad. It's very sad. Do you have any, any questions about them? No, I don't. That's pretty much all I can ask. Is there anything else you could tell us about them? Do you want to know why they're becoming extinct? The reason they are becoming extinct. Have you ever heard of bycatch? Yeah, maybe you can tell me about bycatch. Yeah. Okay, bycatch for those who don't know. Um, bycatch is when uh, trawl boats or fishing boats go out in, and when they pull the nets up, um, the fish that they, there, there might be species in that catch that is not a target catch. So you might get. Uh, fishing trawl boats going out fishing for say tuna and this species other species will get caught up in that net in that catch and you know not not just with that but it, but that was just a species just off the top of my head so they might be fishing for a certain species of fish whether it be ball fish or whether it be redfish other animals other marine animals get caught in that now the other animals that get caught in that are what we call a non-target species. Yeah. So that non-target species could be one of these. Bycatch means a non-target species. That is a bycatch, which does happen a lot. Now there are laws in place now um, for commercial fishing where they have to go through their nets and throw um, the bycatch back in. Yeah. They have to release it back in, they That's can't good. keep it. Good. So those laws are in place now, uh, particularly here in Australia, particularly here in Port Lincoln, because we are the fishing capital of Australia. We are. So um, the good thing is, is like here in Port Lincoln, the bycatch is monitored quite well. Um, but that is a huge reason why these guys are disappearing. Bycatch is a huge thing, because they are so small. Um, there is also an illegal fishing company in, I'm not going to say which one, in uh, California that they get caught in their nets. So this is the reason why. And they do have, obviously, their predators. The fish are not here. So they do have their predators as well. But, again, like this, there's not a whole great deal known about their history. There's not a great deal known about them. But Hopefully we can find out about next year. Yeah. But that is the Fosuina sinus, otherwise known as the Vaquita. Yes. So they are an unusual little porpoise. Like I said, they are part of only four species left in that genus. Um, let's hope and pray we can save that we can save the vaquita you can actually guys you can go online and you can adopt a vaquita 
um, I do urge you to go onto the website to adopt a Vaquita. Um, if you like, we can probably even pop that website onto um, into the um, description description of this video. But we do urge you, please um, adopt one of them, help them. Let's help this species survive. Let's not lose yet again another marine species. I think that's it. That is everything. I'm going to go talk one now. Yes, I have. I'm going too. No worries.